Hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. So we recently reached 3,000 subscribers in this channel um, and so I thought I'd do my first ever Q&A. I reached out for some questions on Instagram and I got a few of them. So yeah, I guess I will just try to answer everything uh, to the best of my capability in this video. Alright, so question number one. What is your favorite focal length? I would say that my favorite focal length is 50 millimeters, especially if I can get a wide aperture with it. I just really like it that it's very close to how my eyes actually sees things, so it's very close to my vision. And also, when I'm doing street photography, the 50 millimeter lens allows me to kind of keep my distance from my subject, especially if they're you know, strangers or just people in the street. And I also tend to switch between taking portraits and sceneries, so I think that 50 millimeters is good for both. You know, people's faces don't get distorted with the 50 millimeters, unlike when you have like wider lenses and such. Yeah, I know that it's a bit of a tighter frame, but you can still get context around your subject depending on how you compose your photos. Next, what is your favorite film? I wouldn't say that I have a favorite film in particular. I'd say that my most used film is either Lomography Color Negative 400 or 800. Yeah, like those are just my go-to everyday film. I really like the vibrant colors that they give you. For example, Lomography 400 is very vibrant, but it's also very neutral. Like it doesn't skew warm nor cold, which I think it just makes it really flexible for different types of subject. I also always have like a few rolls of Lomo 800, especially when I travel and I don't really know how the weather will be like when I'm traveling. So the high ISO gives me confidence that I'll be able to use my camera in all sorts of lighting situations, be it normal lighting or low light. But also its color profile is pretty amazing, you should check it out. What is your favorite photo editing app on your phone? I'd say Adobe Lightroom, mostly because I'm very used to Lightroom Classic, um, but also I like Snapseed. Alright, favorite camera you own? Gosh, um, I'd say my favorite camera is still my Fujifilm TX1 or the Hasselblad X-Pan, um, but I don't really use it as often. Right now, I'd say I use my Contax S2 a lot more, just because it gives me access to Carl Zeiss lenses, which is, quite frankly, very awesome. But I'd say I'm still more comfortable using my Minolta SRTs. Uh, my favorite point-and-shoot camera used to be Contax TVS, but of course that died on me. But I recently got a hold of Fujifilm Class W, so I am currently in a honeymoon phase with it. <laughs> and. <laughs> Yeah, check out new content soon. As for medium format, I think the key of 60 is growing on me right now, um, but I still really like my Fuji GW690 Mark II and my Yashica Mat 124. How did you get into photography? That's a long story, um, but to keep a long story short, uh, my family gifted me with a point-and-shoot digital camera back in 2006 and ever since then I've kind of just become my family's photographer for occasions uh, as well as my friends. But also during those formative years, I really thought that I was going to make a graphic novel in the future. <laughs> I was really into drawing and things like that and one of the things that I th thought was that I should take photos of my environment just to have references for drawing. Yeah, so I would walk around my neighborhood and just take photos of sceneries that I thought were interesting. And then later on I started traveling and yeah, I guess that all culminated to me just liking street photography in general. And I decided that I'm gonna be more serious about it. How did you first start using film cameras and what got you into that? Love your work. First of all, thanks. Uh, and to answer your question, I grew up in the 90s, so I do have some experience with using film as a child. But my first camera was digital and I really never thought I would go back and see film again just because everything was digital back in the 2010s and so. Uh, however, in 2017, my dad and my sister gifted me a Polaroid camera and 
boy that was like a gateway drug yeah it really got me into photography and film photography i started researching films and then i got a 35 millimeters and medium format cameras and yeah here i am making youtube videos <laughs> What was your first film camera and do you still use it? So aside from the Polaroid camera that my dad and my sister has given me in 2017, my first 35mm camera was a Minolta SRT-102. And um, I've since sold it to my friend and she's still using it, which is amazing, I think. Show me your camera. This was your, was, this was your camera? Yeah, that was my first camera. Yeah. Which one? This one, oh, and I gave yeah. it, like, sold it to her yeah, <laughs> for cheaper. Really good, yeah. I've gotten a few more Minolta SRTs since then, and that was, like, it was my favorite camera for a long time until I broke my SRT202 uh, last year. Um, but I've since replaced it, actually. Um, I've now gotten a Minolta SR505, which is, like, the um, European version, I think, of the Minolta SRT-202. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to get back into shooting Minolta SRTs. It's a great camera. Did you find a video that was doing well and make similar vids? Um, yes, it was my video on Lomography Simple Use Film Camera that I made back in January 2019. Um, so at the time when I was making those videos, I didn't really think I'd grow my channel so I wasn't checking my views and such and I would only upload a video sporadically whenever I have free time. Um, but then later on I realized that that video was gaining traction and I thought hey maybe I should make more of these. Um, so yeah I started making more videos about reusable film cameras. And to be fair I wasn't just making videos of those cameras because I had this one video that had like 30k views at that time. Um, I actually really like shooting with those reusable cameras. So yeah, I think it was a win-win. How do you get exposure? <laughs> I rely on my camera's light meter. <laughs> um, that or I would use a light meter on my phone or use the Sunny 16 rule. If you're unfamiliar with Sunny 16, the idea is that during a nice sunny day, you can put your shutter speed to about the same as your film's ISO and use f16 as your aperture to get a properly exposed image. And depending on the lighting situation, you can simply open your aperture more or decrease your shutter speed. Say if it's cloudy, then you can open up your aperture to f8 rather than f16. Any suggestions for taking better Polaroids? Uh, so back in 2018, I did a one Polaroid photo a day. I learned a lot from that challenge. I would say just make sure that you have plenty of light and use the flash whenever you need to. And just take a bit of time to visualize your composition before executing it. Also, to make it more interesting, try playing with multiple exposure settings and shutter speeds. Um, yeah, overall, just have fun. What sort of film camera would you recommend for a person new to photography? So I've actually gotten this question quite a lot in the past and I think that it's highly nuanced. I would usually ask the person what they want to get from film photography. Like, are they just trying it out? Do they just want to be casual about it? Like say bringing a film camera to their parties? Or do they want to be a bit more serious about it in the long run? For those trying it out, I'd say just borrow a simple film camera from a friend or somebody who owns one. That way they won't have to commit as much because right now film photography is actually very expensive to get into. For those who want to be a bit more serious about it in the long run, I would say dish a little bit more money up front and buy a mechanical SLR like a Pentax K1000 or a Minolta SRT-101, which is the camera that I started with. So these SLR cameras are mechanical and can be serviced unlike electronic ones. Also, you'll be forced to really grasp the technical skills like knowing how aperture and shutter speed affect your images. Plus, these cameras come with a range of good lenses which you can collect later on. For those who want to be casual, like say if you just want to spiffy your party photos, I suggest getting a point-and-shoot film camera. Uh, you don't have to buy the expensive ones like the Contax T2. I'd say spend your money more on film rather than the camera. So start with a simple point-and-shoot camera like a Fuji Auto 7 QD. The problem with these point-and-shoot cameras is that they break easily because they're old, like me. 
<laughs> I've gone through a lot of Minolta point and shoots in the past and they tend to break after two or three rolls but I do own a Fuji Auto 7 QD and it has lasted me since 2019. Um, I would also recommend maybe the reusable film cameras like the Agfa Photo film camera, Ilford Sprite, and Kodak M35. Uh, they're about the same price as some of the point and shoot cameras in the market right now, but they're new and they don't really rely on old electronics to function. Maybe aside from the flash. Yeah, so the image quality will be a little bit lower than a point and shoot camera, but if you're one of those people who associate film photography with you know character and vintage looking images then these are for you where do you find inspiration to create your photos and videos congrats on 3k by the way thank you um for videos it's all kind of random to be honest most of the time, I don't really go out thinking, oh, I will make a video for today, but rather I would take videos alongside the photos that I'm taking so maybe later on I can edit them and spin a story out of them somehow. As for photos, I tend to switch between documentary and conceptual. So for documentary, I don't really plan anything. Usually if I find something interesting, then I will stop and take a photo of it. If it's more conceptual, then that's when I plan it a little bit like I would visualize what kind of themes and emotions I want to convey and then I would think about what kind of environment or lighting situation I should be in to be able to take those photos and then I will execute it. But a lot of times it really just depends on my mood. What has kept you interested and motivated in photography? I'd say it's the process of film photography in general like trying different film stocks or trying a new vintage camera. Even the slowness that makes you more intentional about the different photos that you make. There's just so many different things that I want to try and it keeps me going. You know, it's the idea of making good memories through good images. That and being a part of this film renaissance movement is quite awesome in my opinion. What is your favorite subject to shoot? Maybe not so much a subject, but I really like capturing fleeting scenes or emotions, which is why I think street and documentary photographies are some of my favorite genres of photography. There's just something romantic about capturing something that is once in a lifetime. Can you describe your photographic style? Ooh, <laughs> tough question. How about you describe what you think my photographic style is? I wouldn't say that I have a particular style, I tend to mix things up every now and then and try new things, but I've thought a little bit about this before, how most of my photos is about this melancholic appreciation of the beauty that surrounds me. I actually named my Instagram Bonzies, as in Bon sees something, to reflect this idea of me showing you how I see the world. I tend to think of myself as an observer like a wallflower who's removed from the scene that he's yearning to be a part of. <laughs> Talk about trauma. That and colors. Lots of colors to subvert the underlying sadness of it all. Okay, there's actually a lot of questions. Um, random questions. How do you have a PhD at age 20? <laughs> yeah, so I have a PhD in computer science, but Definitely not in my 20s. I'm in my early 30s. I'm old. What was your major and where in Canada are you? Uh, my major was computer science and I live currently in Toronto. What is your next big trip? Um, I haven't planned anything, but I really want to go to Italy, specifically in the Tuscany area. I was supposed to go there in the summer of 2020, but we all know what happened then, so I really want to replan that and yeah, enjoy Italy. When are you visiting the Philippines? So I think most of you don't know, but I was actually born in the Philippines, but I haven't been back there since moving to Canada in like 2006, so... I thought about visiting the Philippines like after my PhD in 2020 but we all know what happened then so it's not in the plans at the moment but I will for sure visit though. Say oi to your Brazilian viewers. I love your photography style. Oi, muito obrigado. <laughs> Did I say that right? 
Yeah. All right. Well, that was a lot of questions. If you're still here, thank you very much. I hope you liked it. And I hope to see you all again in the next one. Cheers. Do you like your film cut or uncut? <laughs>